A man police say has a violent past is now wanted for a shooting in Pulaski County, and police need your help finding him. A woman faces charges tonight. Police say they found her 11-month-old grandson alone on an eastern Kentucky road. A Lexington police officer is thrown a quite an interesting curveball after responding to a fight at a Little League game. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening. He has an extensive criminal history and police call him armed and dangerous. Tonight we are learning more about a man now wanted for shooting a woman in Pulaski County. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office is looking for 55-year-old Mark Showalter. They say he shot the victim in the head over the weekend. Monique Blair has the new information in the case. It's our top story at 11. He's been on the run now for almost two days, and police say 55-year-old Mark L. Showalter from Eubank is considered armed and dangerous. We have not recovered a weapon at this time, so we feel like uh, he's probably armed and dangerous, or we have to make that assumption that he's armed and dangerous. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office says yesterday a little after 8 in the morning, they were called to a home on East Highway 452, where they found a woman with a single gunshot wound to the head. She was airlifted to UK Hospital. Our preliminary investigation indicates it may have been drug related. About five hours after the shooting, 34 year old Timothy Showalter was arrested from his home here in Somerset, and he was charged with burglary first degree and complicity to commit assault. But Mark Showalter still hasn't been arrested, and the sheriff's office says they have been searching extensively in areas he's known to frequent. But this is not his first run in with the law. He has an extensive criminal past, a multi state criminal past, uh, and some of those uh, criminal activities were involving violent crime. So Walter is described as a white male, 5 feet 10 inches tall, 200 pounds, with blue eyes and gray hair and a beard. A national bulletin has been put out in an attempt to find him. So Walter's son, Timothy, was in court this morning. He pleaded not guilty. In Pulaski County, Monique Blair, WKYT. At last check, the victim of that shooting, 49-year-old Allison Beauclair, was still listed in critical condition at UK Hospital. New tonight, police have arrested a man they say caused a crash that killed a woman riding in his car. The Jessamine County Sheriff's Office has charged 51-year-old Jeffrey Tuggle with DUI, but deputies say that charge will likely be upgraded. They say about 4.30 this afternoon, Tuggle's car crashed on Frankfurt Ford Road near Wilmore. Deputies say a woman with him was thrown out of the car and ended up underneath it. She later died at UK Hospital. Her name has not been released. Tuggle was not injured. A shocking discovery on an eastern Kentucky road. Two people say they found a baby wandering alone in heavy rain. It happened this afternoon on Bucks Branch Road in Floyd County. Two people in a Jeep say they noticed the baby crawling on the road as they drove by. So they stopped, picked him up, and called for help. I'm still shaking. Now I picked that baby up in my arms and him was screaming the way he was. I mean, this was like a cloudburst. This baby was sitting on its butt in the middle of the road, screaming on top of his lungs. And I think I cried as hard as he did. <laughs> the 11 month old boy was taken to the hospital as a precaution. Police say he was dirty and wet but did not have any injuries. They later charged his grandmother, 48 year old Tammy Cooper, with wanton endangerment. Police say Cooper told them she called 911 after noticing the child wasn't in his bedroom where she'd left him. But they're not saying how the child got out of the house. Lexington police have arrested a man they say stole mail from homes on two streets. Police have charged 43 year old. David Clark with theft of mail. They arrested him on Saturday. Police say Clark stole packages and other pieces of mail from homes on Calmia Avenue and nearby Park Avenue. Police say they caught Clark red handed after sending undercover officers to that area. The reason that we were out there doing this observation is because we had received several complaints from people living in the area, and we had even seen some complaints on social networking of people saying that there was a suspect in their area stealing packages. Police say Clark also had two unrelated warrants which were served when they arrested him. 
In a WKYT exclusive, a so-called member and enforcer for the Latin Kings talked to us about Lexington's gang problem. Matthew Roby is now in prison, serving time in connection to the murder of Luis Quiros in 2008. Lexington police blamed gang activity for the murder. Police claimed Roby ordered the murder, but Roby claims he only ordered other gang members to beat up Quiros because he was dating a woman from a different gang. Roby says he regrets what happened. I know sorry is not going to bring nothing back, but um, the fact is, I just hope they understand that's not what I meant to happen. Never meant him to get hurt that bad to end his life because that took away a son, a brother, possibly a father. You glad you did it? Roby says at the time of that murder, there were about 70 members of the Latin Kings in Lexington. He says there were other gangs as well. The Fayette County Attorney's Office now has a gang enforcement specialist who works to stop gang activity in the city. He says Lexington police do have a good handle on gangs. You can see that full story on WKYT.com. Rain falling on parts of the state tonight, and now it looks like cooler air will be moving in. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at the forecast. Hey, Chris. Hey, Sam, indeed. Finally getting a cold front to sweep a lot of that tropical air to our east. Now, that's not coming in the short term in the next few hours. That'll come as we get deeper into our Tuesday. Let's look at how things are progressing late on this Monday evening. Had some on and off rains earlier in the day, especially centered into southern and southeastern Kentucky. Everybody else may Mainly getting in on some spotty stuff. Defender still tracking one little band of some showers and storms south of Bloomington, south of Indianapolis. That's basically right on top of our cold front that continues to march its way toward the south and southeast. That uh, band of some thunderstorms into Indiana likely running out of steam here very, very soon. Look at the air coming in behind this. It goes from cool to chilly in a matter of just a few miles and those thermometers really drop off quickly and that air around here is going to have a taste of September to it as we go toward the middle and end of the week. What about your Tuesday forecast? Out the door tomorrow morning, we're still a bit muggy with low and mid 60s tomorrow afternoon, mainly 70 to 75, though the farther south that you live, you may press close to 80 before that front gets on into town. You will notice, though, during the afternoon tomorrow, guys, the humidity levels start to drop and then wait until you see how cool those thermometers get for the middle of the week. We'll touch on that with the hour by hour forecast and take a sneak peek into Memorial Day here in just a few minutes. What police say started as an argument between parents got a little out of hand at a Little League baseball game in Lexington. Police showed up and they stepped in to stop it. And after things calmed down, the young players decided to have some fun with one of the officers. Jordan Valines has this story new at 11. It didn't take three strikes for some parents to get kicked out of a little league game at Kennewood Park. The disagreement was over the calls that the umpire was making. The usual cheers and applause. Parents were harassing the hum umpires. Replaced instead with screaming, yelling. They were refusing to leave. The parents were standing in the park and they were still yelling across the parking lot at the umpire. Two parents and a coach. People getting to. Um, emotional. Kicked out of the game for the Northern Cal Ripken League. All of this while police were called. I know they want the best for their children, but you know, that's not the way to show the best for your children if you're getting upset. The umpire was concerned that one of the upset parents was going to damage his car out here in the parking lot, so the police officer agreed to look after the children while he went to go check on that. But during that time, it was the police officer who was thrown a curveball. While we were waiting, and I decided to get in the batting cage with one of the kids, and he tossed me a few baseballs and just had a good time with the kids. This act they love it. proving that no matter what uniform you wear, yeah. everybody wanted to see the policeman in the swing in the bat. A show of good sportsmanship always counts as a win in Lexington. We're not always here to enforce everything. Jordan Valines. We still can have a good time, even wearing this uniform. WKYT. And that is going the extra mile for sure. Officer John Steele said he continued to play baseball and basketball with the children until the game resumed a short time later. Tonight, the Fayette County Health Department has an alert about a stomach illness that often affects children. Health Department leaders say they've noticed an increase in number of cases of shigalosis. It's a highly contagious form of diarrhea. The Health Department says Fayette County only had two cases in 2013, but more than 150 last year. Experts say the disease is spreading.
Since we've seen it going on for longer here in Fayette County, we're starting to see increased cases in other counties as well. The health department says shigellosis is often spread in schools, daycare centers, and pools. To prevent it, it's pretty simple. Experts say wash your hands with soap often, and children with any symptoms should stay home until a doctor clears them. Tomorrow, Kentucky voters will decide which candidates advance to the November general election in a number of statewide races. In the governor's race, Jack Conway is expected to win the Democratic primary, but the Republican primary is coming down to the wire. Last week, the WKYT Herald Leader Bluegrass poll showed Matt Bevan, James Comer, and Hal Heiner in a close race with Will T. Scott trailing. Stay with WKYT and WKYT.com for election coverage tomorrow. We'll have the first results on WKYT News at 6 and updates throughout the night. And for live continuous election coverage from WKYT and the Herald Leader, just go to WKYT.com at 6 30. The mother of a man charged in a Perry County double murder says her son is not responsible for the crime. Matthew Minx is charged with murder and Ronnie Everidge with complicity. Police say Minx killed Sandra and Susie Melton in 2013. Police didn't make an arrest in the case until last week after they say Everidge told them what happened. Today, Minx and Everidge pled not guilty to their charges. Minx's mother says her son has mental problems but would never hurt anyone. It's not right that my son has to go through this when he has not done anything just because someone can just say he did something and you go to jail it's not right police also say both men stole items from the victim's home including firearms a small plane had to make an emergency landing on a Laurel County road this morning it happened along highway 30 near London investigators say the pilot of a single engine plane ran into trouble while flying from Michigan to Florida. Now, he couldn't make it to an airport, so he chose a straight stretch of Highway 30. No one was injured. Tonight, a Shelby County employee is accused of stealing nearly $24,000 in taxpayer money. Police charged Jenny King with theft and 74 counts of forgery. She was a finance officer for the Shelby County Judge Executive's Office. Police and county leaders say earlier this year they started investigating what happened to some missing money. and They say that investigation led them to King. Our uh, investigation turned up about 74 forged documents uh, that we'd found that uh, either the county judge executive or the treasurer's uh, signature were forged on. Police say King forged checks, time cards, and even created a fake employee. She's since been fired. A close call today for a Garrett County sanitation worker. He says he was nearly crushed by a garbage truck. Well, Willie Isaac says he was riding on the back of the truck when the driver lost control and started rolling down an embankment. Isaacs was thrown to the ground, but he still managed to get out of the way as the truck rolled towards him. When it slid, it kind of followed me because I was down there behind it trying to get up that bank, and that bank's wet and slick and muddy. Talk about lucky. Isaacs was not injured, actually went back to work after the crash. The driver had a shoulder injury, but is expected to be okay. Kentucky Medal of Honor recipient Dakota Meyer and Bristol Palin have called off their wedding. That wedding had been planned for this weekend here in Kentucky. On social media tonight, both Meyer and Palin's mother, 2008 vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin, said both families still plan to gather in Kentucky anyway this weekend to, quote, celebrate life in general. There's no word on what led to the wedding being canceled. The couple announced their engagement in March.